everybody, I'm Alex Davis and I want to show you a technique, a bait, that is just a fish catcher. I used to only think that this bait was a winter time, you know, jerk, jerk, let it sit there forever, don't move it. You know, you hear the stories of people saying they let it sit for 30 seconds and we're talking about a suspending jerk bait. Um, and I used to have a box that was one of the normal boxes, it had jerk baits in it, but traveling around the country, fishing for largemouth spots and smallmouth, I figured out that this bait is just not a wintertime bait. It, it you know, pre-spawn, I've even caught them in spawning. Then when you go to smallmouth lakes, I think they bite it all year long. Um, that's why I have so many different varieties, so many different colors. Uh, personally, my favorite one, it's a Jackal Re-Range, but you can see I have a lot of different manufacturers and they're all good, they're all great. And colors, I mean, I, if you look in this box right here, there's a bunch of colors and we'll divulge into that a little bit later. But a suspending jerk bait, what you can do with it, it's just not a wintertime bait. There's a lot of different things and we'll go over that here real soon. Uh, to me, equipment is very, very critical on a jerk bait. Um, I'm throwing a Shimano Metanium 6-2 to 1. It makes me have super, super long casts with a jerk bait. That's very, very important. Line, I've always been a 10 pound fluoro guy. I use P-Line Tactical, but 10 pound fluoro to me is the best. Eight pound, you might be able to get the bait a little bit deeper, but I feel like you break more fish off or you have the chance to break more fish off. You know, you get a small mouth that's kind of feisty and he gets it and goes the other way. To me, eight pounds, just a little light. 10 pounds, about perfect. The reason I like lighter line versus 12 or 15 is that just gets the jerk bait deeper. So I want that jerk bait to go as deep as I can get it, but not sacrifice line size. So to me, 10 pounds perfect for that. And if I'm wanting to get a jerk bait even deeper, you know, seven, eight foot, they make models that have a longer bill. So to me, eight pounds or 10 pounds perfect. Eight pounds is too light, 12 pounds is too heavy. And on the rod, this is actual a poison adrenaline. It's a 611. I like a shorter rod. The reason being is when you throw it out there and you twitch it, you don't want to be twitching in your rod in the water. I've seen people that have a 7.3 rod and when they jerk it, their actual rod's in the water. So you want a 6.10, 6.11 rod. You want one that's got a lot of tip to be able to make a good long cast because a lot of times jerk bait fishing, it's going to be windy. That's the best days to me to throw it. So you want one where you can make a good long cast, but you still have to have backbone enough to when you're twitching it, that bait's underneath the water, kind of like walking the dog has a lot of action. So to me, 610, 611 rods, perfect. This is a medium plus. Um, what that does is it gives me a little bit more backbone, but still has plenty of tip. Another thing for fighting fish, that's why you don't want too stiff of a rod. A lot of times they might have one hook hooked in the side or one hook hooked in the tail. So you don't want to pull those treble hooks as they're extremely sharp. You don't want to pull those treble hooks out of the fish's mouth. I keep a light drag because a lot of times they're going to get to the boat and that's when they're going to go nuts. So get a nice soft tip rod, get light line, don't horse the fish. He's got three sets of trebles, just let him do his thing. That's going to put more fish in the boat. So my, my equipment is just as critical as my retrieve or colors of jerk baits in my opinion. Talking about colors, I keep it real simple. Like I said, on retrieves, I have two styles on colors. I throw three colors more than any color out there. This one's, it's called Blue Pearl Shad. It's just a translucent, has some blue on it. Looks super, super natural, it max, masters a shad. So large mouse, this is the color I go to when the water's clear. Um, spots also love this color when they're really feeding on shad. So that's probably my number one color. If the water has a little bit of stain to it, it's still a natural color. This is called Super Shad. It's got just a natural back, a green brown back, and it's got a matte finish sides. It's, it's not really a white, but it's not translucent. It's kind of a pearl. Um, anytime I get just a little color in the water, that's the only color I throw when it comes to largemouth spots. And then when I kind of transition and we go to smallmouth lakes, and spot lakes when the fish are really aggressive, I like a lot of chartreuse. Um, I don't know what it is with smallmouth and spots and chartreuse, but they just really like it. This one's called Secret Shed 2. Um, it's got a little blue, a little purple, and a lot of chartreuse on the belly. Something about that chartreuse makes spots and smallmouth just go nuts. They can't handle it. Um, working it quick like that triggers them. That chartreuse triggers them. So I just keep it real simple. If I'm fishing for spots and smallmouth, I'm throwing that, have a lot of chartreuse on it. Any little bit of watercolor, I want more of a matte finish, even though it has a natural back. 
And when I get super clear water for large mouths and spots and they're feeding on shad, I go to a translucent with a little bit of blue on it. So, I mean, I keep it simple. I got three colors and that's all I need. Even though I have a whole box full, I seem to go back to these three colors. There's two ways I like to retrieve a jerk bait. If I'm gonna fish for large mouse and it's gonna be cold, I fish it slow, but for small mouse and spots, the best way I've seen to retrieve it, and a lot of people don't do this and they kinda think I'm going a little too fast, but this is the best thing I've seen is never let it stop. I mean, you're always jerking it, give it two, give it three, but just, you wanna get it in a rhythm, especially if you can ever get in a rhythm where you just give it two, just as fast as you can jerk it. Small mouse and spots cannot handle that. I don't know what it is about them that it triggers them. I guess a lot of times you're fishing in really clear water, so they're coming from a long ways to get it. So the faster I can retrieve it, the better I'm gonna be. I feel like I get more bites than virtually just letting it sit there for a couple seconds. So never let it stop, always keep it moving. And the good thing about that, spots and small mouse are notorious for just coming up on a jerk bait and swatting at it. They can get such a good look at it that they can shy away. When it's moving that fast, between him trying to swat up through it and three extremely sharp treble hooks on a bait, they usually don't get away. I mean, sometimes you might hook one in the side or hit him in the tail, but if I catch him, I catch him, I can weigh him in. I don't really care how he gets it. I'd rather him get it in the mouth, but if he swats at it and it gets one in the back or one in the tail and it's in the boat, I can weigh him in. So to me, the faster the better for small mouse and spots. And then for large mouse, I twitch, twitch, pause. I like in between three to five seconds, just let it sit there. Kind of how I do all winter, early spring. It's just a real natural approach. It looks like a dying bait fish. So when your shad are dying off, let it sit. Because if you've ever watched a shad in the water, they'll kind of kick and then they just sit there. Sometimes they sit sideways, they go upside down, but a lot of the times, they're just, they're dying, they're just sitting there. So that's what I'm trying to mimic. Just give it a couple twitches, let it sit. A couple twitches, let it sit. So my jerk bait hits the water. I usually reel down to get to the depth I want. Pause it, let it sit there for a couple seconds. So to me, large mouse, let it sit. Small mouse, never stop. That's the only two ways I fish a jerk bait. I've seen it works everywhere around the country from large mouse, small mouse spots. So. That's how I reel, that's how I retrieve a jerk bait. There he is right there. A lot of times as soon as it pauses is when he gets it. There he is right here. And he got a face full of it. Kinda have to watch him on the jerk bait because that's probably the number one way I've taken a hook to the hand or to the leg. They usually have a hook on the outside and a hook on the inside, but that's what a jerkbait do, especially in eelgrass like that. So throw you a jerkbait, catch you a bunch of fish. <laughs>